why I call myself fat and I think you should too. So <laughs> I've had quite a few comments like this, which are basically saying, don't call yourself fat, you are beautiful. Um, and suggesting that it is derogatory and that I am somehow attacking myself or speaking down about myself because I like saying that I am fat. Like, fat is my choice. Like, fat of all the words I could use to describe myself is the one that I am most comfortable with. And I do not feel that it is derogatory at all. It I would use many other words to describe myself, except for one like fat, dude. I mean, I would have done good teeth, nice eyes, chiseled jawline. Any of those things would have been better than saying fat. I don't know why these people choose to make certain words powerful and other words not so powerful. And it doesn't really even apply directly because these people will literally have give and take moments where on certain days they'll be really offended that you call them fat. But on other days, they'll call themselves fat and they have no problem with that. I just don't understand why these people are so incredibly, like, uh, bipolar about why they choose to be called this. And again, they, they what they'll usually say is the reason why they like to be called fat is because they don't see it as a negative thing, okay? And the way a word is derogatory is the context in which you use that word, okay? So, like, for instance, if you saw a car driving down the street and you, you looked at that car and you were like, it was a nice Lamborghini or whatever, and you were like, fuck right that's gonna be way different to stubbing your toe and going fuck because it's it's a different type of thing okay like different contexts and, and different words um which is kind of cringe sometimes because some certain people go really out of their way to make it seem like they're not doing something wrong like i remember when i was in high school and we were reading like slave books which are like all the rage at the time i don't know if you guys read slave books when you were in high school but they were like super common and i remember one of my teachers who was white was reading aloud to the classroom and before she said the N-word, she literally asked the black students if it was okay for her to say the N-word, which was really fucking cringe, bro. You're reading a passage in a book. I don't think anybody in this classroom is going to be upset or, like, start a gang war because you said the N-word. It's in the book, bro. It's like, that's actually what they said in the book. But sometimes people go really above and beyond with it. So... But uh, yeah, uh, it is it is derogatory depending on where you look at it. If you go, I am fat, and you don't look at it as a bad thing, that's fine. Most people would look at it as fat because it is fat. You know, it is bad to be fat. It's not a good thing to be overweight. It's not a good thing to have carrying extra weight on your body for literally no reason other than just to have it on your body. Uh, so most people would consider it to be a negative thing, but usually these people try to proclaim that it's not, even though it literally is. But anyway. It is the one that I like to use for myself. And this is partly because I find a lot of the like euphemisms for fat, you know, curvy and bigger. Yeah, they're not accurate. That's a f if she goes into not being accurate, a lot of the curvy or bigger or a little extra or BBW or uh, plus size, most of these terminologies have lost so much of their value nowadays because I don't even necessarily know what any of those things mean anymore. Like if you're telling me you're plus size, but I'm looking at you and you're 400 pounds. I guess you're plus size in a very, very basic degree. Sure, you're plus size. You're bigger than what you're supposed to be. But god damn, you're black. And the same thing for plus size. Uh, I mean, um, same thing for curvy. Like, what do you mean curvy, bro? You got no curves at all. You got lumps. Like, let's be honest. You're lumpy. You're not curvy. So a lot of people like to sugarcoat the terminologies, and they'll say something when in reality the context in which the, the, they're saying this stuff doesn't apply to them. I don't know why so many people. It's like literally all you're doing is trying to make it seem like you're not that which you already are. So it's fine if you don't want to do that, like you don't want to acknowledge the truth, but if you're going to make the rest of society look at you in this particular way, it would be really beneficial that we use common language. Um, even plus size to an extent, although I use that a lot because that's like a clothing description. I find that they are a little bit patronizing. They're a little bit like tiptoeing around the fact that you're fat, like twice. Yeah, that's a factual statement, dude. But then again, fat in and of itself is also tiptoeing around being fat, right? Like I would say that this woman is obese, but I know for a fact she would never say that she's obese because she knows that obese has a tremendously negative, negative uh, connotation behind it. And being obese, even if you used it, well, I guess there are a few ways you can use obese in a good context. Like for instance, my meat is obese. That shit is big, right? But most of the time, if you say something's obese, it's probably not a good thing, okay? Especially when it comes to body sizes. So she can say that she's fat all she wants. But the funny thing is, like, it's me, right? I can look at one of my guy friends who's, like, maybe 20, 30 pounds over, and he can say he's fat. But if you're literally 100 pounds over or even 200 pounds over, like Amberlynn Reed or something like that, and you're saying you're fat, well, it kind of devalues the term a little bit because now you're putting yourself in the same category as my friend who's really not even that much over. Like, you understand? Like, it's a very ambiguous term and the way in which people use it, it, it is a very, very, like, controversial. Like, people do use it however they want to, so...
Uh, but I doubt that she'll ever use the word, the real word, which is obese. That would be the way more technical term. That would be the one more accurate compared to fat. You know, let's be honest here for a second. I'm trying not to say you're fat because fat is such a like loaded word. It's so negatively charged for so many of us that it's like we want to tiptoe around and pretend that actually we don't know that you're fat. We just think you're curvy. We just think you're a larger lady, you're luscious. Yeah, a lot of people like to put like adjectives or prefixes in front of stuff to make it seem like it's not that bad. Like I remember one time during Halloween shopping, I was like waiting uh outside the waiting room i was in the waiting room when a girl was going in and change into like a you know whatever like a halloween costume or whatever and i swear like there were these girls in this of this other aisle looking at this stuff and they were like trying it on like you know putting it up to themselves and this fat girl was like do i look fat in this and she was like you're a plus size barbie and i'm just thinking like that bitch is dying like that bitch is literally obese like i don't even know how she got upstairs it's a literal there's no elevator there's no there's no escalator i don't know how she got upstairs and you are sugarcoating her disease. And that's even worse because that's the last thing you should be sugarcoating. This is your best friend. But people say that. They literally will sit there and they'll try to, like, justify your existence because they know that you don't want to know. You don't want to, be like, hear the truth. So they'll just try to make it seem like it's a lot better than it actually is when it's really not. You're dying. It's not a good idea to be dying, honestly speaking. And a lot of health complications come from certain things about being fat. So probably prioritize losing weight a little bit it's not cool you know you're not a plus size barbie you're dying it's just what it is you're you're, you're dying okay you're diabetic you're hashtag diabetic queen slay queen edges and things such and so forth it's not good okay so yeah we do do that we 100% do that a lot and sometimes it could be beneficial like making somebody think that they're a lot better than they actually are when they're gonna die already so it's like I don't know you're just lying to them but you know they're gonna die already so that's fine but if it's like your best friend dude Help them out, dude. Tell them the truth. It's only it's only beneficial for them. Larger lady. Anyway, <laughs> I think that we all know that actually I am fat. You're it obese. Let's keep it a buck. You're fat. I'll give you that. But it's kind of like a square could be a rectangle, but a rectangle can't be a square almost, right? Like, I'll give you the fact that you're fat, but that's really not doing justice to yourself. It's not the key identifying term that a lot of people would use to describe you. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that'd be like somebody classifying, like, an, a semi-truck as a car. Like, I guess I see where you're coming from, but let's be honest here, dude. That's a semi-truck. In the same way that you are fat, but you're also obese. And that is the way, that is the word that we should be using first and foremost. If you are fat, you know that you are fat. And also, you have had people use this word in a horrible way in the past. You have had people throw that word at you with the intention of hurting you. And so there is tremendous power and this sense of like safety and freedom when you are completely fine with being called fat when you don't think that being fat and being beautiful are mutually exclusive i mean i see what you're saying but that doesn't take away from the fact that that person like it just if you're in a conversation with somebody and somebody says bro you're literally fat like and they're using it in a negative context right if they're saying like bro you're fat you get no bitches so the the context of that statement would be because you are fat it's a negative thing and that's going to prohibit you that's going to prohibit you from getting women yeah that's a negative thing if somebody said oh my god you're just fat like and that's a good way of saying like oh my god you're shapely you're beautiful like i love your curves and things such and so forth fine but it depends on the way that you use that word. Like, if you're using it in a bad way, like if somebody was like, dude, you're gay, like that's not bad. But if somebody was like, dude, that's gay, then it's kind of bad. You understand? Like, there are going to be different ways in which people use words, and those words are going to be determined differently depending on who says them and how they say them. So, if you think that being fat is fine, and somebody says, like, damn, you're fucking fat, dude, you're big as fuck, you're fat. You could go ahead and say, like, oh, that's fine. Like, I know I'm fat. But, like, you do realize that they're trying to offend you, right? Like, that is the entire attention. I like calling myself fat. I know. I usually like calling myself big meated. I don't know why you would call yourself fat, but go ahead. I know that the comments that say don't call yourself fat are coming from a lovely place where um, you think that I am being nasty to myself. But actually... You can go ahead and find... You can go ahead and find great joy in calling yourself fat. Most people, the reason why they hook on to the whole, like, no, no, you're not fat, is because being fat is not a good thing. Everybody knows that. Like, anybody that's fat doesn't want to be fat. So when you sit there and you go, I'm fat, most people go look at that and go, ooh, uh, no, you're, you're not that. No, it's not bad. Like, it's okay because they know it's bad. It's not a good thing to be fat, which they're trying to be nice to you, I guess. Like, they don't want to start any fires. And I see that you see that. 
but you have to acknowledge the reason why they're doing it because it's not a good thing and i understand that she's reworked her mind in order to like somehow cope with the fact that being fat is okay which it's not it's really not and that's the reason why she's looking at it from this particular point of view i put a lot of work in to feeling okay with my body and do you think that like the people that think being fat is not good also didn't put in that work like what is the context behind the, the statement you just made right there like are you trying to tell us that we are lesser than you because we didn't put in that same amount of work by the way just because you put in work to understanding that fat is not a bad thing doesn't mean you put in good work you understand that's like you might have put in negative work. This actually might have hurt you. You understand? It's like learning that racism is good. It's not good for you to learn that stuff. And not all information is good information. I know there are plenty of people out there that will go, yes, all information is good information. It just depends on how you're utilizing it. But I'll give you a really good example of information that's not always going to be good for you. Like, for instance, a lot of people, um, like, who's that guy? Alex Jones was denying the Sandy Hook shooting, right? Obviously, it did occur. But a lot of people believed him because he has an audience of millions of people that listen to him every single day and they thought that what he was saying was true when in reality it wasn't true so sometimes information can hurt you um that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be the one that discerns what information is good and what information is bad but you have to at least admit to one degree or another that not all information is going to be useful to you or even good so uh i mean i see what she's saying bro but it, it, it just like what are you even trying to say right now, bro? Like, you learned something that was literally making you dumber. And you're trying to, like, brag about it as if you did some grandiose, like, amazing thing for yourself. When the reality of the situation is, you just made yourself stupider. Everybody else around you didn't have to unlearn fat phobia because it was I. It was totally cool to be fat phobic. To accepting and embracing the fact that I am fat. But you don't have to be fat. That's the thing. Like, you're over here talking about some I embrace that I'm fat in a very joyful way when you don't have to be fat. Being fat is literally not a character trait that you have to exhibit. You could just not be fat and you'd be fine. But, all right, go off, queen. <laughs> like, that's the problem. These people have put themselves in a category of, like, I've accepted this. Dude, if you didn't have an arm and you, let, and you went, I accept that I don't have an arm. Okay, that's work. Accepting that you're fat when you don't have to be fat is irrelevant. Uh, it's not work. It's just you. Ad it's like it's like negative work. Like you're you're admitting to yourself, or not even admitting. You've like conditioned yourself to believe that even though there is work to do, you're literally not doing it. So like in a, in a really technical way, you're actually doing no work. If I'm being honest, like that other people will say that I am fat to me and they will mean to hurt me and I have chosen to not let that hurt me anymore, so. It's like, it's, sure, I mean, it's fine, you can go and do that. But if the intention of the word is to hurt you, like, that is what the intention was. If you are fat. That's like getting shot with a, that's like getting shot with a gun and you're wearing a bulletproof vest and you're going, that didn't hurt me. Okay, that's great. I'm so happy that you didn't take damage from that bullet. But that person that shot you with the gun intended for that to hurt you. And fat still feels like a really loaded word for you. I'm not going to call you fat because it's up to you what language you want to use to describe your body. Voluptuous, big meated, master meaty, uh, big giant, massive, manly, meat ladon, musty meaty. That's me. That's what that's those are the words. Those are the language that I choose to identify my body with. But what I would say is when you can make a term like fat which for so long you have lived in fear of hearing in fear of having someone throw at you in a negative way when you can reframe that and feel completely neutral or even positive about a word like fat when you can think that actually you can be beautiful and successful and attractive and lovable and sexy and all those things and fat when you can be a fat bride what are you talking about right now dude like i understand what you're saying right now like i get it that all of these things can occur simultaneously but you have to acknowledge that being fat is literally just a detriment like okay it's fine that you want to be fat i don't care you can go ahead and be fat hashtag live your life but you can't acknowledge that this isn't going to be a total detriment to your life. Society is not built for fat people, as you guys always claim. There's a reason for that. Because being fat is literally just, just absolutely detrimental to your health in a very basic degree. Let alone navigating the world. Like, it's already an anomaly to be fat. It's not a normal thing. Like, well, maybe over the past 60 years it's become normalized. But really think about that in the grand scheme of things, bro. Like, you guys are fat in the last 60 years. In all of time, nobody was ever fat. Isn't that kind of weird that you guys think that suddenly, like, you deserve all this great stuff even though you live in a very privileged time to begin with? Like, I'm all for more productive stuff. Like, I'm all for, you know, more access to things and such and so on and so forth. But you guys need to 
prioritize stuff. You guys are literally eating yourself into disability, and then you're complaining that you're disabled. And then you're also complaining that you don't have accessibility tools anymore. S then don't be fat. Why are you? Why do you expect everybody else to change for you? I just don't understand. Like, okay, fine. You could be happy. You could be a bride. You can be beautiful and all this other stuff. But you have to acknowledge that some of those, most of the stuff is going to be impeded by being fat. Like you can, you can still have all that stuff while being fat, but you don't have to be fat and then also have all those things be occurring. And then also those things would be amplified compared to what you would have had if you were fat. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Because that's something I never thought because I never thought I could get married fat. When that's a crazy okay look dude i don't know why this woman has her entire life just being a bride her her tiktok name is literally the fat bride and she does like weddings and stuff like that which is really crazy bro like she worked in the wedding industry apparently for a very long time and i guess she never knew that she could be married which is i guess uh i don't know exactly how that works bro um it's like literally being lactose intolerant or working at the hood factory and then finding out that you're not lactose intolerant anymore like i don't even know how that happened but whatever like i'm happy she's getting married no problem but she makes it her entire life you can go ahead and be happy and all those things be fat um but dude why would you want to like you could just lose weight i get it it's effort but all the things that you just listed out were also effort and some of those things are actually more effort than losing weight you do understand that. Like, most people lose weight passively through the processes of calorie deficiting. Like, understanding nutrition and then just adjusting accordingly. Instead, you're literally talking about some, I have a career, I'm doing all this great, amazing stuff. Dude, building a career is very, very difficult. And losing weight is not even half as difficult as that. And you're over here, like, proclaiming all this stuff. Like, great, I know you have the ability to do it, but you're just not doing it. So, like, what's the point? You um, can have being fat and being those other things, living alongside themselves. And when fat no longer has a power over you, when that word does not strike fear and dread into your heart and make you feel a little bit sick, there is so much freedom to that. It is a- I mean, yeah, if you convince yourself that, if you convince yourself something, if you convince yourself that this particular word is no longer gonna negatively affect you, that's fine, but like all you basically did was you're in the house and it's on fire and you're just sitting there in the kitchen table drinking from your coffee mug going, this is fine, this is fine. That's basically what you're doing. Like, it's okay that you've done that. You have basically just conditioned yourself to believe hogwash. Fine, by the way, go ahead. I don't care. It's like your life or whatever. But you do understand that this is like bad information, right? Like, no, you don't understand that obviously, but anybody watching this, this is bad information. This is like, this woman is actually telling you that she has convinced herself that something is wrong, but it's no longer wrong in her brain okay whatever bro hey really powerful place to be and i would strongly recommend that you try to take away some of the negative charge from words like fat because at the end of the day it's just a descriptive word it's more than just a descriptive word it tells it's way more than that okay it has medical uh de 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 defections to it okay it tells a lot about the person's uh you know like health statuses um maybe like their relationship statuses literally you were just saying that it took you a very long time to find a marriage i don't doubt it literally um so yes it's more than just a descriptive word and it actually is actually really offensive to say that it's just a descriptive word it's fine if you want to just be a fat guy but you're more than a fat guy you're more than that you can you can be not a fat guy or a fat lady you can be other things once you take away society negative additions to it. And I would love to know actually in the comments if people describe themselves as fat or what you like to be called as a fat person, as a plus size person, as whatever you want to say. Like, what words do you like? Have you- I don't think it really matters about the words that you choose to identify as more of like the reality of the situation. Like it's fine that you want to be known as whatever you want to be known as. Like I'm not here to deny your humanity, but I think it's like really important to understand that like if you have serious problems and you're trying to sugarcoat those those terms or like you're trying to use different languages to try to make it seem like it's not as bad as it actually is that only works for so long like you don't have time you can't continue to do stuff like that and think it's just going to keep going like that no man it's, it's less about the language you use and actually like what is really happening to you kind of gone through this journey where you've reframed how you see the world fat the world the word fat I would love to know because it's one of those things that was a big part of me changing how I felt about my body. So I see a lot of these people like saying really, really nice stuff. Like the words that are coming out of their mouth, like how they how they display those words is really nice. But the reality of what they're saying is absolute hogwash. Like this person is literally telling you that 
they have literally redefined words and languages so that way it doesn't offend them to the same degree that it would have offended them before which is really really crazy that's an extreme thing to say you're basically admitting that you had a problem and the only way that you can transcend your problem was not to solve the problem but to change the way you thought about it like oh yeah no it's completely fine even though two plus two equals four i'm gonna say two plus two actually doesn't equal four and matter of fact two plus two is not even actually a problem like we're not even gonna look at that it's actually cupcakes like what do you it's like it's completely irrelevant you guys are literally making shit up just to make it seem like you guys don't have problems so let me know in the comments oh hey so i'm 36 and i'm scared of teenagers <laughs> So uh, I was uh, picking up a two good to go the other day um, at Pizza Express. And so it was like 10.30, you know, restaurant was closing and there was this big group of teenagers outside and I saw them and I literally drove away <laughs> and had to turn around and come back to park because I didn't want to get out of my car next to the teenagers. I had to in the end and it was terrifying. <laughs> I mean, I kind of see where she's going with this. I mean, if they're going to tell you you're fat, it's like whatever, but dude... Some teenagers act like they don't have any morals or like their life is literally worthless. I don't know how many times I've seen kids do some crazy shit. And I'm just wondering, why did you do that, bro? Like even me, I would do, when I was a teenager, bro, I did some illegal activities that are probably not going to ever be announced, right? But the point I'm making is like there are plenty of kids out there. I actually remember recently, bro. I was walking down the street with somebody and there were these kids on a bus, right? You know how the kids are on buses, dude. They're going crazy and all this other stuff. Dude, they just started throwing stuff out of the bus and the Haitian bus driver didn't care. They didn't care at all. And granted, um, this guy has to literally drop off like, I don't even know how many kids, like 50, 60 kids on this bus. It was a big bus. And they're just tossing stuff out the window, like going crazy. And I did the same thing. I literally remember uh, knowing a bump and we would like purposely sit on the very back of the bus so we can get the bump and tell the bus driver to go fast. And he did, he did. Some kids have no morals, but if you're upset that the kids are gonna call you fat, uh, that's kind of tough. That is kind of tough. But people nowadays are lacking a lot of uh, not, not so much morals. Like I just saw a video of a woman that was at a gas station and a guy literally ran up to her, was pre-beating, like he was pre-beating his meat and he busted on her leg. Like he just walked up to her and nutted on her leg and ran, like full sprint, top speed out of the, uh, out of the establishment. And the woman was crying. Um, I don't know if I would have cried necessarily. I would have been greatly disturbed at the fact that a man walked up to me pre-beating and busted a solid load on my on my leg and then i was kind of thinking like this guy had to have been beating for a while right because there's no way you can like there's no way that you could be beating off like an instantly you know bust like that dude so i was actually really surprised that he was able to do that as quickly as he was um also he's probably done this multiple times before given the fact that he was a technique like that was uh very very efficient so he's probably had done this at least three or four times um, but anyway, yeah, a lot of people nowadays are lacking morals. <laughs> so here's the thing, like, I don't feel like I'm particularly socially anxious or like that I'm scared of people in general. I'm pretty bullshy, actually. I wonder if they are black. But, um, there is something about a group of teenagers, right? And I think this is, like, from the past. So when I was younger, I would wear headphones everywhere. And to be fair, I kind of wear headphones everywhere now. Terrible. By the way, never do that. If you're an adult or anybody, never wear headphones everywhere. And if you are, don't have them on, okay? Uh, they will literally impede your ability to know what you're doing and your spatial awareness will be clouded like crazy bro because you don't know what's going on you know how many videos i've seen of people like you know those that time period like a last month or month before where a whole bunch of women were getting victimized over there in new york city like dudes were like walking up to them and like clocking them off the side of the head and stuff like that uh in almost every one of those cases that i've seen these women getting victimized Every single one of them had AirPods. Every single one of them had Beats. Every single one of them were, had no idea what was going on around them. And I'm not saying it was their fault, obviously. Um, it's the person that hits you is the fault. But, dude, can you, like, look around? Can you, like, make sure you know where you are? Like, I remember seeing a video not too long ago of a woman in New York City. And she was just on the subway train, right? She was, like, on the, uh, the, the platform waiting for the train. And she was just on her phone looking down at her phone headphones on and literally maybe 10 feet away 10 to 15 feet away there was a guy that was clearly deranged because he was swinging swerving randomly flailing his arms at people he already hit like three people he knocked down an old lady but this lady this girl with the headphones on 
She didn't know. She didn't look over. Because you know why? Because she didn't hear the young... She didn't hear the old lady that just got molly off the side of her head. So, uh, instead of, like, looking over and seeing this crazy guy and getting out of his way, she didn't even see him. And that guy walked up to her and swerved her shit. I don't feel bad for her, dude. Um, it really is comes down to, like, be aware of your surroundings all the time. I get, like, we shouldn't have to in the sense of, dude, we live in a society and things such and so forth. But there are crazy people within the society and... You have to operate accordingly, okay? Don't just put all of your safety in everybody else's hands, okay? Look around. Too, because it's become part of what I do. Um, and yes, I do love music, and yes. If you are really, what she say? She was boisterous, dude. Like, I already hit her up on the gram. I don't know if she's ever going to reply because uh, she has nothing to game talking to me. But if she really is that type of person that will talk to anybody or speak her mind, Dude, speak your mind to me, bro. I'll give you a platform. Because it's become part of what I do. Um, and yes, I do love music. And yes, the world is loud and distracting. It is nice to not have that. But the reality is that a lot of it was like a self-protection thing. I didn't want to hear people say horrible things about sad. me. I That's really sad, bro. And this woman thinks she doesn't have a problem. She's literally out here as an adult telling you that she has changed the meaning of fat to her. So that way it doesn't apply to her the same way. And then also here she is saying like, I don't want to hear people call me fat while she made that video previously where she said she was okay with people calling her fat. I don't want to hear people call me fat. I wanted to be able to pretend that I couldn't hear them call me fat, even if I did hear it. You know, it was like this protective cocoon that I put around myself where I had plausible deniability, you know, that I hadn't heard these horrible things. and I didn't have to engage with people saying nasty things about me. And there is something about a group of teenagers that makes me feel like that's going to happen. <laughs> but you literally said in the previous video that you don't care if somebody calls you fat. So why does it matter if you're walking by a group of teenagers and they call you fat? What the fuck, dude? Am I like dumb? Didn't she just say that? She literally just said in the previous video she doesn't care. So is it like, is it the word fat that you have a problem with or is it not the word fat you have a problem with? What the fuck are you talking about? So you're literally telling me that you have a problem while telling me you don't have a problem. Okay. Um, which is very funny because I am 36 and Terrible. I'm pretty sure to a teenager I just look like an old lady like I don't think that I'm even significant enough for them to say anything about yeah, probably not. I'm just old to them right so like if you know that you're like a nobody to these people and yet you're still intimidated by them because there's a chance that they may call you fat even though in the previous video you literally said you don't care that somebody calls you fat because you look at it as a neutral term why do you care about any of this? I, I'm, I'm failing to understand how you're... What is this cognitive dissonance? Did she forget that she made that video? Like, how the fuck does this work exactly? Um, but it did get me thinking about the level of, like, shame and fear that I used to carry around. You with still carry it around. You still... Make no mistake about it. You literally just said you refused to walk by the teenagers and wait for them because you were scared that they may or may not call you fat so you still carry that around make no mistake about it even though in that previous clip you did say you don't care you care tremendously with myself that i would that i would assume that there were people that were gonna attack me you should assume that there are people who are gonna attack you i mean that's a factual statement always be aware of your surroundings the thing that i felt vulnerable about which was my weight right and that's not to say that there aren't people that are going to do that, because there are. Um, but I think that it's like, there's this thing where you're kind of anticipating something bad happening. And so you experience the bad thing, right? Even though it hasn't happened yet. Like, so let's say you spend every day thinking someone's going to call you fat. Um, and then like, maybe once in every couple of months, someone does. But you are living through the pain. And Dude, the do you find... Okay, I just want to know. Just for the record, do you not care that people call you fat? Or do you care that you called you fat? That first video was literally just you proclaiming that you took the power back. And fat is a neutral descriptor. And you don't care about anybody calling you fat anymore. Because it doesn't matter to you. Because you took the power back. But here you are in this video. And I'm not playing with you. This video is literally like maybe at most a week or two apart. How the fuck? Did you did you just forget you said that? Like, did you not think that this was going to come up and... Like, dude, this is, like, literally verbatim what you said. And you're over here claiming that it's, it's, it's a problem now? Like, what? Especially from teenagers? These people, like, will sit there and say absolute bullshit. This is why I just say, like, don't believe any of these people. Like, their consistency 
their consistency is literally non not even real bro this person is literally lying to themselves and then they can't even do it correctly they, they don't even apply by the, this is why i said like you don't give a fuck dude is you don't you you actually lied about all the things that you said or you're just you just made it all up to make it seem like you were cool in that one video when the reality when it actually hits you you actually do care shame humiliation whatever of that every day even though it's not happening to you every day because you're making it happen to yourself all right you're just thinking about something that you're super insecure about like your psyche your deep down insecurities are feeding out into real life because you know that there is something wrong with being fat you know make no mistake about it these people projecting these insecurities in this particular way it's not healthy most people are not actively thinking about being victimized about a, a particular character trait it's just not happening so this woman saying this stuff is actually her admitting that she has a mental problem here and she has major cognitive dissonance meaning like she has two thoughts that are completely opposite from each other that would conflict with each other if they cross paths and she just doesn't see a, she doesn't see any reason to work those through her head she hasn't thought about it enough and she's just saying this stuff outward and i'm sure a lot of people could look at this as like inspiration and make no mistake about it this is inspirational we're literally seeing a woman that is a major career person okay that has major mental disabilities this is actually impressive so i'll give her credit for that right and so seeing this group of teenagers really reminded me of that thing where we start to list out all the horrible things someone could say to us we start to experience yeah, but like the thing is most of the time it doesn't really mean anything to you especially if it doesn't apply to you like for instance if you went to me and you were like david you're fat okay well that's fine but i am not fat so that wouldn't really apply negative to me in the same way that somebody was like tv you're gay well i'm not gay so it's not exactly a bad, a bad thing now granted i will take offense to it in the sense of like you're saying something derogatory for the intention of hurting me i get that but simultaneously it doesn't apply i don't really care for this woman uh she's obviously applying to her she knows that she's fat and she knows it's a bad thing to be fat and that's why these insults matter so much to her that's the reason why she's actually taking so much like uh problems with these particular statements even though she literally said that she just she she doesn't so it's this attack on us even though it isn't happening we are doing it to ourselves we are assuming yeah you should be looking in the mirror when you open up that fridge too bro have a have a mirror in the fridge every time you open the fridge you lean in to go take a look at something you go like this uh, what do I got? Oh, damn. I'm kind of big today. Damn. Hold up. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Let me just close that up. I'll eat something some other time. Like, these people have an inability to actually realize that most of the time when they say this stuff, they don't realize that they're saying actually crazy shit here. Like, this is a very insane statement this woman is saying. Like, I don't think... Do you guys not understand? Like, this is... She's actually telling you that she has some mental issues right now. And she's just totally okay with admitting that and but she doesn't see this as a problem like she's not registering this as an issue which is insane but we know what the world thinks of us and maybe we do maybe we don't we are assuming that we know the bad things that are going to happen and so it's like we think that if we experience it now if we tell ourselves that it's going to happen that it won't hurt as much but the reality is all we're doing is making ourselves experience it twice all I want to know was, did the 14-year-old say you look like a beach ball? Or, like, what insult did they use exactly? Because I got to let you know something right now. If somebody calls you fat, that's nothing, dude. Come on, bro. Get some better insults. Calling me fat? Weak. Weak, bro. You better say something else. Say I look like, I don't know, burnt mashed potatoes. Tell me that I look like Jenga blocks if they fell over. Tell me that I look like wet milk like i look like milk that you put in a water balloon and you left out in the sun that would be really disrespectful somebody said you're fat whatever dude like it's nothing bro like tell me that i'm you know really really bad right t t say some really disrespectful shit like tell me that you know like oh your mom i had to dislocate your mom's jaw to slide my bbc inside of her lips or whatever like say some really disrespectful shit bro people People are just too, a little bit too, uh, generic nowadays when it comes to insults, bro. Go off the deep end, dude. Say some shit that's gonna offend me for the next, like, 20 years, you know? Don't say I'm gay. Say I look like I eat the corn, I eat corn the long way. Say that. That's way more disrespectful, bro. So, I don't even know. Maybe we're making ourselves experience it because they were never gonna say anything, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I just want to know what those 17-year-olds or 14-year-olds said. But also, if teenagers could not congregate outside Pizza Express, that'd be great because... Uh... So yeah, instead of, like, confronting your fears, you're just going, please don't do it. Please don't. Kill, please get away from me. Don't do this ever again, please. 
scary. True. Here's something that really changed my life as a plus size person. A diet. I mean, that would be the number one thing, right? A diet, exercise, understanding nutrition, all of that stuff would be extremely beneficial. But something is telling me none of that stuff is going to be touched on. Very nice hair, though. I started thinking way more short term. True. True. Definitely think more short term. It's okay to live in the moment. I think more people should live in the moment. Too many people actually don't live in the moment. They're thinking about the, the, the future in a very drastic way. And even in ways that you don't actually even register at that moment. Like going in a particular place. Like you're going to a place on a vacation or you're going with family or you're going to an event or whatever. A lot of people are prioritizing taking pictures or videotaping something or whatever, right? Um, a lot of that takes you out of the moment and you're worried about what other people are going to judge you based off of this picture. So you're taking this picture so other people can look at it. Instead of just embracing the moment, instead of understanding that like this is not something that's ever going to happen again, and this is something that you're gonna like, ex you're, you're never gonna experience again, and this, this is like a, a moment in your life, right? A lot of people don't live in the moment anymore, so I agree with that. Like people should live in the moment now, but I'm pretty sure what she's actually saying is like, I know this is gonna lead to like major health comes, major uh, un unwanted health outcomes later on in the future. So I'm just not gonna look at that. <laughs> I'm just not gonna look at that. Like sure, the short term. The short-term downsides of being fat is, like, indigestion, uh, a, a disgusting, you know, like, really greasy top lip, maybe. I don't know, dude. Really, really gross uh, amounts of deodorant that you have to just apply across your entire body because you smell like a truck stop bathroom. Maybe. But uh, the, the, the long-term is, like, death. So just don't think about it, I guess. When you are fat, that's like going to the doctor, and the doctor's like, "Yeah, you have cancer, but it's actually like okay because we can actually get rid of the cancer if you do chemotherapy, but it will take a little bit of time." And you go, "I just think I probably just don't want to think about that. Like, I think that probably instead of you telling me that, which is really offensive, I'm just not gonna think about that actually." So you're a bad person for telling me that, by the way. And you are obsessed with losing weight. Often you are always thinking like a year in the future. Right? Sometimes it could be progressive journey. Like when you're losing weight, it is always about like the next marker, the next marker, the next marker. Sure. But uh, when you're in the moment and you acknowledge where you started from and then you see like a month later that you've lost some weight, dude, and you look fantastic in the midsection or you chiseled down your face more and you can see jawline and you can see under chin and things such and so forth. That stuff is really nice. So, yeah, it's a really important to live in the moment and understand what progress you've already gotten done and really look back at where you started, dude. I mean, it's, it's, it is beautiful. It is very, very beautiful. Your metamorphosis is incomplete, but it's definitely progress, so. Right? You're thinking you're going to do that thing next year. You're going to date. You're going to go on holiday. You're going to wear the outfit, like whatever. You're not going to go to this social event, but you'll go to them next year, right? We're forever living in this dream version of the future where you are thin and you feel okay about yourself. Are you saying that like I could never be thin? Is that what you're saying? Because like that's not true. You can totally just be thin and you'll be fine. You know that right? Like it's you can do it. I believe in this girl even though she doesn't believe in herself and she has actively uh, brainwashed herself into believing that it's not possible for her. I do believe in her and I think that she can do it and it is possible for you to lose weight even though you've literally, you know, conditioned yourself to believe otherwise. People respond to you differently and you can wear these clothes. And all this stuff is actually true, by the way. Like, if you lose weight as a fat person, you will experience all these things. At least way more than you would have if you were fat. So, this is just her, like, basically telling you the all the good stuff of losing weight so yeah just let that sink in for a minute like she's actively telling you all the all the benefits of losing weight and then she's still gonna at the end of this go yeah but just don't just don't do that anymore think about what you're experiencing now think about even though if you're fat and your front boob on the left side of your body the one down here embrace it you know yes it has oysters growing yes it has a little bit of barnacle growth but embrace the barnacles you have babies on your body Yes, your hormones are not real and you woke up and you're literally like in a state of disarray because it's like perpetually living your life on, you know, on, leave, living your life on empty on terms of gas. Like forget about that though. Embrace what you have right in front of you. The plate of food, the pasta, the chicken tenders. Embrace that. The chocolate chip cookie that you just body slammed. Embrace that. Not the fact that in, you know, two, three, four, five months you could be significantly healthier and maybe ob obtain a man or a woman as a potential candidate. Forget about that. Embrace the hand that's beating your meat right now, even though it is your hand. You're acceptable and you don't feel the way you feel right now. And happiness is available to you. And I lived in that space for a long time. Very concerning. If I was dating a woman and she said this to me, dude, I'd be like, well, 
like you're not in that same path right like you live like that but like you you transcended that like you got over those feelings and then she would go no i just stopped thinking about it like i just i just didn't you know those are still there yeah oh yeah i mean obviously all that stuff is still warranted because i haven't done anything like i've just i've just been the same <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've literally not changed at all. Like, a matter of fact, there's literally no growth at all. Literally, the only growth I've had is my gut increasing. Sad. And what that does is really discount your experience right now. And in fact, you focus in on the negative of your experience right now because you want to use it to fuel your um, pursuit of that. It might be a good thing to do that, though, because like a lot of people are literally in shit situations and the motivation of getting something or doing something could be that motivation that gets you out of that you know, pit of despair. Uh, I know a lot of people personally that have nothing going on in their lives. Like they may be working, they may be like making a lot of money, but a lot of these dudes that I know are very depressed because they have no girlfriend, they have no like lives outside of their work and they just spend their whole entire lives just working perpetually. And it is very nice for these people to think, well, I'm gonna lose weight. And you know what? That's gonna make me a better person. I'm gonna be more healthy. I'm gonna like go to the gym. And a lot of these things of like thinking about things that you're gonna do or how you're gonna progress in your life require change. So for instance, I know many people that thought, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna be physically fitter. I'm gonna go to the gym. And guess what? That next day, two days later, they go to the gym. And you know what? Speaking from personal experience, you have to go through sometimes a great loss or a dramatic experience to kick you in gear. Like I know that I went through a very depressing time in my life and literally somebody said, David, you know what you should do? Um, I don't, I didn't know this person. I was just watching a YouTube video and they said, you should go to the gym. You should just go to the gym and work on yourself and try to find something that you can do that you're actually in control of. And you can see progress towards instead of like playing video games or like doing any of other stuff, like actually go to the gym. And I decided fine. So I literally walked to the gym that same day, got a $10 gym membership at Planet Fitness and I worked out for months. For months and I did see gains and I did see progress and even if you're going for the wrong reason which would be for me to like get out of my depression state a lot of times people that do enter in these like particular arenas of trying to promote self-growth it might not be for the best reason a lot of guys go to the gym to impress women when most women are not impressed with guys that are very very muscular most women are okay with average looking men but doesn't matter because guess what now you're going to the gym not for women but for your own self accomplishments and the same thing could be said for anything in your life like if you lose weight sometimes you're losing weight because i want to look good sometimes you're losing weight because i want to impress somebody else but along the way you slowly start to realize yes this is impressing to other people but it's also impressing to me it's also showing me that i can do something beyond myself i can actually have long-term growth and have that be sustainable. Sure, there could be fuck-ups in the middle of that, but it's okay because ultimately the growth in the long-term is gonna be more beneficial. Instead of just saying, nah, I just don't do that. Like, don't don't have long-term goals or anything like that because it's not practical. Just like live your life, uh, you know, floating it, floating by, I guess. Like that's, it's, I mean, that's a terrible way of looking at it, but you know, hashtag Slay Queen Edges. That future where you are thin, right? You wanna like guilt and shame yourself into losing weight. Sometimes you need guilt and sometimes you need shame, dude. Let's be honest here for a second. Like you should feel shame if you can't walk up the stairs without being out of breath if you're 24. That's not good, okay? Like you should know that that's not, like if you don't have any underlying health conditions, like if you have nothing there and you're just fat, dude, that's not good. Feel some shame. That's not a good thing, okay? Yes, 100%. Even this woman's age, when she's like, what, 34 years old, 36 years old, if you're out of breath, like, you do realize you're about to have kids, right? Is she going to have kids? I don't know. Whatever. Let's just say, hypothetically, you have kids. Do you not care that you're gonna, your kids are going to have to need you to be taking care of them? Like, that's, like, essential. Or do you not have, like, grandparents or parents in general that you're going to need to take care of that you maybe need to put more effort towards, physical effort, to maybe sustain that particular type of aspect of your life or anything in general, really? Let's be honest. Even having a husband or a wife you're going to have to do things for them, right? So that's going to require you to be physically fit. And like a lot of people will sit there and say, you just be selfish. And like, it's okay to be selfish every once in a while. Like it's fine to acknowledge that this is something that you need or this is something that you want to do and you're going to do it. That's okay. But it, it takes a really big person, not in this particular scenario, not like big, but big. It takes a really, really adult. It takes a lot of like a big responsible person to understand that um, even though this is something you don't want to do, you have to do it and you're going to do it, you know, in the sense of like having children or people relying on you in good health like they need you to be good health so they can you can take care of them and sure it is a little bit like i would say like physical kidnapping almost right it's like you're being held up somebody's holding gunpoint of you like you better be healthy so you can take care of me even though i'm not healthy which doesn't really make sense in the spectrum of kids because kids are like you know you did it to them like what the fuck you want but you know what i'm saying um it is uh but it, it's also like 
it, it's like physical um what's the word i'm looking for babysitting almost um they didn't do good for themselves so you have to do good for yourself to make up for that and that really sucks but it could be the motivation you need to push through and become better and be a more uh uh well-rounded individual that has the odd uh, has the ability and, and the aptitude to transcend all those um challenges and it makes you a stronger person so yeah and when I decided I was not okay to keep waiting to be thin anymore, I started to think way more short term. I started to think like, what's gonna make me happy today? Like drugs, I guess. Uh, it just kind of seems like you're feeding into addiction almost, right? This literally sounds like some addiction shit. Like what's gonna make me happy today? Fellatioing, I don't know, like drugs, I suppose. Like, sure, I guess, but it's okay to look to the future. like. I don't know. What are you even advocating for right now? Short-term gain over long-term progress? It's like lying, okay? Like, okay. When you lie to somebody, it's good for this short-term. It is good for the short-term because you're maybe satisfying somebody else. Or maybe you're even satisfying yourself. But the long-term effect of that is going to be catastrophic. It's going to start dominoing effect. From the moment you lie, it's going to domino effect. And then later on, the, the, what's going to happen is it's eventually going to hit the wall and the truth's going to come out. That's what it's like every time somebody lies. And the same thing here. Like if you only focus on, focus on short-term game, you're, on, you're always going to ignore the end game. You're always, because the people that have been focusing, the people that have been like really, really building to that end goal, they've got their, they got their builds together because they knew what they were trying to do before the game even started. And you're still focused on trying to pass the tutorial because you can't get out of what am I gonna do to make myself feel good. Sometimes it's not about what makes you feel good. Sometimes it's about doing the thing that you that doesn't feel good. Because guess what? If it doesn't feel good now, odds are it's probably gonna feel good later. Like lying, for instance. Like, if you lie now, it feels good now, but the later on effect of that is terrible and it's probably gonna be even worse. So there's that, or you can tell the truth now and it sucks because you have to tell the truth. But the long term is you're a better person for it. You're a stronger individual and you probably, has a, you probably have a better outcome than you would have if you didn't. What's going to make me happy this week, this month? What am I going to plan that I'm going to do this year? Like what like, holiday? You, you could just do like a weight loss thing for a year. You know that, right? Like just focus like every month. Like, oh, I'm going to lose five pounds a month. That's not that hard. What am I going to take? Am I willing to like wear clothes head to toe in the heat? Am I willing to be that uncomfortable now? Am I willing to be unhappy now? And when I started to focus on being happy now, having the experiences now, I started to realize that so many of the things that I felt were unavailable to me as a fat person, and that's why I had to lose weight for them, were completely available to me and that it was me taking them away from myself. It was it's, it's fine to say like, you should focus on the moment. It's, it's okay to focus on the moment. Like you should live at the moment. But dude, this just kind of sounds like you're feeding into addiction. Like this just literally sounds like I'm not gonna focus on the long-term effects, but I'm gonna actually focus on like having fun now which is not necessarily a bad thing, but like if you do that a lot, yeah, it becomes a bad thing. It's like beating off, it's like watching porn, like watching porn once a week, watching porn once a day or whatever, even that probably not that bad of a deal, depends. Uh, but then you start doing it four, five, six, seven times a day and then suddenly you're not having sex with your girlfriend anymore and she's wondering why you're not having sex with her anymore and you're just sitting there beating off in the bathroom trying to be like, no, no, no I'm not doing anything in here. That's like that was me saying That's an no, issue. I was gatekeeping myself. I was like, no, only thin people are allowed to have that experience. I feel like this woman just projects so much on top, on top of what everybody else thinks, when in reality, nobody thinks that way, dude. If you're fat, you can probably experience most things that thin people are experiencing. The issue is that it's the sensitivity to which you're experiencing those things. Like, I can climb Mount Everest, for instance. This is a hypothetical. I would never do that shit because I'm not trying to freeze to fucking death. But... I can climb Mount Everest, for instance, and I'd have an easier time to climb that Mount Everest compared to you because you're fat. And that's what I'm getting at. Like, I'm sure you could do most of the things I can do. It's just you're going to have a really hard time doing most of that stuff. And if you're okay with doing that stuff really, really difficultly, then okay, fine. Go ahead. You're totally fine with you. Go ahead and do that shit. But you could just acknowledge it's going to be harder. Well, that feeling only thin people are allowed to be happy only this imaginary version of myself is allowed to live the life i want so if you can start to focus on what's going to make you happy like this month and that doesn't mean you can't lose weight like at all it doesn't mean you can't be like i would like to be whatever weight by next year you're literally um, 
what it means is that you're going to start living your life instead of waiting your entire life away because how long have you already been waiting and are you really willing yeah but to you're wait? literally telling people like to not focus on the weight loss and instead just be like you know just fuck it i guess and then just focus on what's going to make you happy and to a certain degree, I agree, but it sounds like a really, really extreme version of that. But hey, if you're focusing on weight loss and you want to do it passively, that's fine. You can totally do that. All that time again, because I waited for like 15 years. If you try to lose weight for 15 years and then you ended up just not losing weight, bro, I would love to know what you did for those 15 years, bro. How did you go 15 years and you never lost any weight? Or if you did lose some weight, you regained it. What the fuck happened in that time frame? I would love to, to be know. thin, and it didn't happen, and I wasn't willing to waste any more time. Are you willing to waste another 15 years or whatever it is for you? I want to talk about this picture. So this is taken at work. Um, Damn. And at this point in time... This nice. Uh, good physique. Good physique, bro. I could tell there's a... She could build some muscle on this, dude. Laura Croft. Laura Croft. Uh, a little bit of Laura Croft in there. You guys know what I'm saying? This is a long time ago. I had lost, like, six, seven stone, That's I think. pretty good. Damn, And pretty I was good. going traveling not that long after this picture was taken. Like, I was going away for, like, six months. And I remember, during this wedding, going and hiding behind the wedding venue to cry. Why? Because I hadn't lost enough weight. Because I thought that everyone would hate me, you know, all these people I'd meet in hostels or whatever. Um, I thought that it would ruin my whole trip. That I, I just kind of think that she's obsessed about this to a, to a different degree. Like, she's really tunnel vision about that. And you know what's really interesting, too? Is that even though nowadays she's saying that she's, like, transcended that and she no longer thinks like that, we know she does because she's still obsessed with it. Like, it's in every single one of her videos, it's like she's emphasizing how much she doesn't care about it while telling you she cares about it tremendously i mean literally the first and second video are a prime example of her saying one thing and completely ignoring it and then doing another so even if we were to believe her here that she was crying or whatever because she's focusing on weight loss and that she somehow managed to feel better now because she's not thinking about it anymore she is still thinking about it she's like just lying to herself like we're seeing it we're seeing it real time this woman is like literally lying to herself and us and she doesn't even acknowledge that it's her like it's literally all up to her she needs to be the one that makes these decisions but she can't see it like she can't see that she's still fucked she's still in this mindset dude i couldn't be in any photos like i just felt so unbearably inadequate and like i hadn't worked hard enough it's got to be terrible for her now bro because she has almost done nothing it seems like and it hadn't been fast enough she's gained more weight since then right six pounds and extra seven pounds i hadn't done well enough and it was agonizing. It was all I thought about. And I think this is the major thing when you're losing a lot of- I feel like this is like a young person problem, dude. I don't know, man. It just kind of depends. Like, know your worth. You know what I'm talking about? Especially, like, I know when I'm dating, a lot of people have really big insecurities. Like, am I enough for this person? Am I adequate? Do I have the skills necessary to impress this person? Can I be entertaining for this person all the time? Most of the time, that shit goes out the window after you have one or two relationships, and then you realize, I am what I am, I know what I bring to the table, I know what I have to offer, and that's that. If this person wants to cheat, if this person wants to leave, if this person wants to do that, at least I know that I did my best effort to maintain a relationship, right? That's okay. And when it comes to this as well, like, once you get to a certain point, you just stop caring about it. You know what I'm talking about? You just kind of go, it is what it is, dude. This is my life. Like, I, I gotta accept it for what it is, dude. Um... Like, I understand that weight loss could be very, very traumatizing for a lot of people, and it's like a never-ending quest of losing, 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 losing until you lose, uh, and even then, you have to mid-max and things like that, so it's a consistent journey, but most people, they lose a lot of weight, and when they hit their pinnacle, they just kind of coast, right? They just kind of go, and it seems like she never actually hit the pinnacle, like her pinnacle at least, and now she's just like super obsessed with it because it seems like she got close, and she never actually crossed the finish line. And now she's just, like, all the way back in, like, the Grand Canyon or something like that. Like, she took detours, and now she's all the way back. And it's tough, man. Wait, is that it's become so all-consuming that you lose perspective on the rest of the world? I had a great trip, and I'm not sure that me being uh, thinner than I had been or fatter than I wanted to be impacted the quality of that trip or the connections that I made at all. Um, and... You know, there were no practical things I couldn't do. I was actually very fit at this point. Um, I was working out, like, incessantly to an alarming degree. Yeah, it seems like she's doing everything incorrect. It just sounds like a person that 
thought they were doing the right thing, but they weren't actually doing it and it wasn't sustainable. This is what I always tell people, like, stop hopping into the deep end. Stop thinking, like, stop mid-maxing the build before you even get out the fucking doors, bro. Like, you're still in the tutorial and you're mid-maxing. It's crazy, right? Like, if you're focusing on weight loss, going to the gym nine hours a day is not going to help you, okay? You know what's going to help you? Understanding nutrition, understanding how many calories your body needs, and eating accordingly and getting as many good foods in those calories as possible eating as much as you can within the calorie deficit and that's very sustainable especially if you're eating like 4,000 calories a day i know because i've seen people eat 4,000 calories a day off of two meals and it wasn't even a lot of food it's just a lot of dense food if that makes any sense so a lot of these people will sit there and say i, I don't know what i did wrong like i was going to the gym for nine hours or i went to the gym like three times a day or i was doing this and like i went on keto and i did this giant meat fast or whatever and i'm just thinking like what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, why didn't you just do the normal thing and just find out how many how many calories you needed and slowly taper down to that and then go below that and go below that? Like, why didn't you do that instead of, like, these extreme things? Oh, I thought you had to go to the gym. No, you don't need to go to the gym. Like, it's, it's not even about the gym. It's really not. Like, if you want to go to the gym, it's like the icing on the cake. Go ahead and go to the gym if you want to build more muscle while you're doing it. Like, your body composition will be different. But if you just want to lose weight, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to go to the gym for nine hours or excessively like this woman did. And I always hear this, bro. These people jump into the deep end expecting giant results and it's not sustainable. That shit burns out quick. If anything, so like I was more than fit enough to do all the physical stuff I wanted to do. Um, I wasn't too heavy to go skydiving, which was something I was worried about because it is a weight limit. Damn. But yeah, when I see pictures from this time and specifically this picture because it's literally taken in the bathrooms, probably after I've been crying. Look at those bags under my eyes. Um, I never understood taking pictures in the bathroom, dude. Like, if there's, like, a toilet behind you, don't you feel a little bit dirty? I just remember how incredibly miserable I was and how much I hated myself. And so... It seems like she still hates herself, though. Like, she still says the same shit. Like, she's st even though she's talking about this in the past tense, dude, the first video alone should have told you how much hogwash this woman is spewing, bro. <laughs> I see a lot of stuff on uh, this app. Like, she's proclaiming that she's, like, ascended so heavily, but it seems like she has gone nowhere. She's literally still stuck in that same mindset that she was however many years ago this was, where she was crying in the bathroom because she, was too, she wasn't thin enough. It seems like nothing has changed. You're, like, you're still trying to find ways to cope with this. Because I think the algorithm hasn't quite figured me out, and it still shows me quite a lot of, like, weight loss content. And... People are so unhappy. People have lost a lot of weight and they're still so unhappy. So? And so I want to remind you, really. Like, that shouldn't matter. Like, okay, look, if you lose weight and you're still unhappy, that's okay. At least you have one less thing to worry about. There are a lot of reasons that somebody could be unhappy. And maybe you think that losing weight could be a way to make yourself happy. And it might be. But that's not necessarily the be-all, end-all for a lot of people, okay? But that shouldn't be an indicator to just not lose weight. Like, if you don't lose weight because you see somebody else that did lose weight and they're still struggling with all their issues or whatever, that's, that doesn't mean that you'll have that same issue. And by the way, it's going to be nothing but beneficial for you given the fact that you are literally dying. It's only beneficial for you. So don't listen to this fucking woman, dude. Just because you, you're going to be unhappy or you might be unhappy, you may or may not be unhappy if you lose weight, that shouldn't be a reason not to lose weight. At least it's one less thing to worry about, bro. And this picture is a great reminder of it for me, even though I'm not like at my thinnest that I've been and I wasn't like at my goal where in this picture and I was unhappy about that. I want to remind you that losing weight in and of itself isn't going to make you happy. It just depends. It could and it couldn't. Did you? She can't say that. She can't say she's projecting OD here because first of all, she never lost enough weight for to consider herself to lose weight. Okay. She's actively telling us that she had a, she had an image in mind. She never got to it. So she's not imagining herself as losing weight. She just was losing weight in the moment, but she never got to that pinnacle. So her saying that if you lose weight, you'll still be unhappy is bullshit. She can't say that. That's actually insane. That's like somebody saying, if you get married, that won't make you happy. The fuck it won't? What the hell, bro? You know how many people I know that got married that are incredibly happy after they got married, bro? A lot of people. So yes, it might have made you unhappy. And also, I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there that are also unhappy after they lose weight. I'm not doubting that. But to sit there and just blanket statement, that's not going to make you happy, is bullshit. That's not how it fucking works. It's actually incredibly insidious, insidious statement, dude. Because you're actively demonizing people 
to lose weight off this baseline of like you're not gonna be happy you don't know that you're just lying to yourself to try to convince yourself that your weight gain was justified you're good if you want to be fat but most people don't want to be fat and it's really terrible to tell people that they're not going to be happy if they don't lose weight that's terrible in fact it's just going to open up different problems for you you know you're gonna hate yourself in a different way she's projecting od here bro oh my god she's every time you hear her say you think of her that is what she's experiencing bro she's literally all this stuff that you're hearing right now is internally what she's thinking but she's projecting it externally to make it seem like it's everybody that's affected kind of like when you were in school and you were the only one in class that didn't do your homework and you're thinking no there's probably somebody in here that didn't do their homework no it was just you just her she's thinking all this stuff she is insecure about it she's gonna have different problems she had all these issues so like no she's she's just projecting man it's actually really sad you are gonna find new ways to bully and harass Projection, yourself bro. and i think that's just really important to remember that you can lose weight or you can not lose weight. These things could occur, okay? It's important to understand that these things could occur, but that's not necessarily a truth. It's just something that might happen. But if you don't fix what's going on in your head, if you don't change the way that you see yourself and your body, it is never gonna change how unhappy you are. Yeah. Um, I really feel like if I lost weight now, for whatever reason, um, that it would be a much more pleasant experience because I'd be able to do it from a place of love for myself. Not that I am intending to do it, but that there wouldn't be this major dissatisfaction and desperation and pressure and shame and horrible self-talk around it. That I, don't think, I don't think very many people are doing this, bro. This woman's on some different shit, bro. And every time I watch more of her videos, I'm just thinking like, this woman is actually like mentally unstable, bro. She has a lot of issues, bro. And a lot of people are supporting her. And I just kind of think, are you guys not listening to the what, what the fuck she's saying? Like, this woman is actually crazy. Like, she has some severe mental problems and people are like cheering for her. And I guess that's what social media is. Like, we promote people that have major health major health problems and it almost kind of seems like we can donate it to a certain degree and like encourage it it's actually kind of crazy like how many people do you see that are like autistic or have major melt uh major meltdowns on the internet but people still support them like it's fucking crazy bro but anyway um you're beautiful you're amazing i appreciate you guys for watching the video today if you watch the video in its entirety sorry uh if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Thank you, anybody that's a member. Thank you, anybody that is subscribed. You guys are all amazing people. I love you all. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in curls. You know, like the things on your head, those beautiful locks that you have right now. Beautiful. Absolutely, magnificently amazing head of hair you have there. And if you're bald, guess what? I love it. Let me lick it. I love the baldness. Let me put my hands on your head and let me do this. Let me just, you know, do one of these on your head. I like that. It's a nice feeling. I like that. Man or woman, you think I care? I don't care, dude. It's not gay either to put your hands on another person's head. Hold up. Not like that. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, you're a beautiful person. Your curls are defined. Your hair, your eyes, your lips, and... Your elbows, they're so they're just so delectable. They're so great. They're so amazing. I wish to glaze my tongue upon them every single day. You're such an amazing person. Good job on all the progress that you've been attaining. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, if you want to check out my social media, it will be linked down below. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.